Hello, I'm Neil McIver, member of the Plymouth Select Board, representative to the Conservation Commission, Economic Development, and Plymouth State University Relations, and a member of the Pemigewasset River Local Advisory Committee. Today I'm here to describe the importance of Warrant Article Number 3 on the Plymouth Town Warrant. Due to the concerns of the COVID-19 pandemic, we did not have an in-person town meeting this year. On March 9th, we voted at the Plymouth Elementary School for our town officials. On April 17th, that's a Saturday, from 9 a.m. until noon, we will be voting again at the Plymouth Elementary School for our town warrant articles. Of particular importance to this, this community is warrant article number three to designate Plymouth as the destination for environmental studies and ecotourism. On April 24, 2017, the Plymouth Select Board recognized Plymouth as the destination for environmental studies and ecotourism. Warrant Article No. 3 formally adopts this resolution by the legislative body of Plymouth. For some history, since 1763, when Plymouth received its royal charter, our town has been noted for its bountiful natural features and as a major crossroads for commerce and industry. At the confluence of two large river valleys between Squam and Newfound Lakes and bordering the White Mountain National Forest. A survey by the Planning Board recently indicated that citizens place very high importance on the protection of our natural resources. The Conservation Commission has worked diligently to develop public access to natural areas through hiking, skiing, and educational programs. The Park and Recreation Department has also been working to develop natural resource areas. The Energy Commission has been active planning energy conservation measures and renewable energy proposals. Plymouth State University, our public schools, private schools, and private organizations have all developed programs to promote environmental awareness. Plymouth has large areas that need to be included in planning for access and protection, such as the Oxbow Wetland Complex, the Pemi and Baker River Corridors, environmentally sensitive zones, Loon Lake town-owned land on Tenney Mountain Highway. The Greater Plymouth area has outstanding features also, such as Livermore Falls State Park, Squam Lakes with a Science Center of New Hampshire, Rumney Rocks Climbing Areas, Stinson Lake, Polar Caves, Boating and Swimming on Newfound Lake, Sahiganet Falls in Bridgewater, the White Mountain National Forest Headquarters in Campton, and the Hubbard Brook Experimental Research Station and major ski areas. Plymouth State has the nationally recognized Judd Gregg Meteorological Institute, which manages a laboratory on Mount Washington, and the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration AWOS Weather Station for the National Weather Service at the Plymouth Airport. Plymouth is truly at the center of environmental studies and ecotourism. This destination will tell the world that we are planning for the future. Climate change has become the leading issue of our time. Many people will be affected by this. Over more than 200 years, Plymouth has evolved into a center for higher academic studies, including climate science. Our significant natural resources in the greater Plymouth area attract many visitors. Plymouth State University, in collaboration with the citizens of the town, have established many endeavors for the study of our natural features and the effects of climate change. Plymouth is such an important center for environmental studies and ecotourism. It actually started on December 7, 1808, 
when the New Hampshire legislature chartered the Holmes Plymouth Academy as a school for the better training of teachers, which in 1870 provided transitional support to the newly state chartered Plymouth Normal School in 1871, which has been increasing educational opportunities for the past 150 years. In conclusion, I have a letter from June Hammond Rowan, our Director of Planning and Development for the Town of Plymouth, in which she states, this designation is consistent with the goals in our town master plan, such as market the valuable and diverse assets of Plymouth has to offer to future entrepreneurs, business, businesses, and young families, including attractive, vibrant, walkable downtown, two major rivers, wide variety of local and regional recreational opportunities, and easy access to the White Mountain National Forest and Lakes region. In addition, the State of New Hampshire's Department of Business and Economic Affairs recently created the Office of Outdoor Recreation Industry Development to support New Hampshire's diverse outdoor economy and connect our state's world-class outdoor assets to broad economic development strategies such as workforce and business recruitment. Our ecotourism designation will potentially help us in working with this new office. The Town of Plymouth needs to develop a focused economic development plan. This plan should address multiple resources and opportunities in the community as well as ways for us to market them. Certainly, an ecotourism designation and our location near the lakes and mountains should be a part of that effort. Once the Office of Outdoor Recreation Industry Development is staffed, we will start to work with them on aligning with state goals too. And that is a quote from June Hammond Rowan, our Director of Planning and Development for the Town of Plymouth. And um, I'd like to introduce you to Lisa Doner, professor from the university, and she's going to have a few comments. Thank you. Thank you so much, Neil. Um, I'm always amazed when I hear a list of all of the assets that Plymouth has, of the ones that just don't come to mind immediately because they're tucked away and hidden. But I visit them all almost every year, and um, I really appreciate this initiative that you've taken to put this warrant article on in front of the people of Plymouth. I'm coming here, um, I wear a lot of different hats in Plymouth, and I'm coming here mostly as a resident, who uses um, many of the beneficial locations and open space areas and wilderness areas um, just as a way of feeling at home and of recuperating aspects of my soul that just need those natural areas to be reconnected. Um, I am a, a uh, as I said, I think a resident of Plymouth. I'm also an instructor at Plymouth State University in the Environmental Science and Policy Program. And in that capacity, I have done quite a bit of research in and around Plymouth uh, with, the st with the students and also as part of major projects. There's one that we're developing right now um, that is a partnership with Harvard University, for instance, and it's addressing uh, mitigation of climate change using reflective mirrors that allow light to come through so that plants can grow and Plymouth is one of a major uh, partnerships in that initiative along with um, Keene State University and NHTI um, the Technical College in Concord so this is just one example of how um, that component of the um, the ecosystems that Plymouth can bring, the healthy ecosystems that Plymouth can bring, and the willing partnership of the town and the university with the citizens come together and really already are in enabling and living this warrant. This is just a way of showing to the rest of the world that these are values and that if they come here, 
um, they also can participate and appreciate these. And I think this is especially useful this year where so many new residents have come looking for solace from the chaos of COVID um, in more northern and more rural communities. And we very much appreciate these new residents and hope that they also appreciate that we have protected these open spaces for decades and it's there for them to enjoy also and we hope that they will contribute to that.